Hello my little thrill seekers and truth speakers. Today we're going to do a quick lesson on the scientific method and we're going to be using paper airplanes to do it because what good is science if you can't throw things? This isn't actually a lesson on folding paper airplanes although if you stick around till the end I will do a quick tutorial on two different types of paper airplanes. The focus of this lesson is going to be on coming up with a design, testing that design, and tracking your results. The scientific method involves asking a question. In this case, how do I get my plane to fly very far? My research involved going on the internet and looking at different paper airplane designs. I went with the classic. It's worked in the past. I'm going to give it another try. But then I also researched and I found out how to make the world record holder for the longest distance of a paper airplane. During the experimentation phase, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it a bunch of times and each time I'm going to make minor adjustments and see if I can get it to go further and further. So I experiment by throwing the plane. I analyze the data and say, wow, that went really far to the left or that flew right up into the ceiling. And then I make small adjustments and I re-experiment. Experimenting and analyzing tends to go back and forth and back and forth a lot. At the end, I'm going to draw a conclusion. Let's throw some things. Well, that was a fun little montage. I'm a little out of breath. One of the things that I did as I kept cutting clips is I kept making small adjustments. Now, one thing that I've noticed happens in art class, and I'm sure probably happens elsewhere in your lives, is people tend to get down on their designs and they tend to scrap them. So I make a paper airplane. It doesn't fly the way I want. This is where analyzing your data and conducting more experiments comes in, not handy, crucial. If my plane didn't fly quite right the first time, it's not because my design was terrible. It's because my design needed some tweaking. So I made small modifications as I went. I would gently curve one side up. The nose of my plane is crooked slightly. Turn a little to the left, so I'm gonna turn a little to the right. I would say this fold is tighter crease than this fold, and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna tighten that crease. Small modifications are how you get the results you want. If I have to start over from scratch every single time, there's no way I'm gonna be able to track my data effectively. As I'm experimenting, it's probably a good idea to track my results. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a simple chart. Test number one, mine flew 13 feet, which is pretty terrible if we're gonna be honest with ourselves. The end of test number one is I bent up my left wing. After I did that, I flew it a second time, test number two, and it went much further. I actually got 17 and a half feet out of it. So that's all my tracking data looks like. I'm not a scientist, but this data right here let me know what I did wrong and what I did right. This lesson isn't really about which one of these two flies the farthest. This lesson is really about whichever one you choose, what modifications you can make to maximize its distance. That's the scientific process. I was right. I didn't think it was right, but it was right. 